everyone. Uh, at this point, I'd like to uh, call our meeting to order. Uh, I see that we have a quorum present. And we'll jump right into our first order of business, which is the Secretary-Treasurer's report from Mr. Vest. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Brown, give us an update where we're at uh, since we're in a transitional period. Yeah, so we'll finish, uh, I think we're in final stages of finishing our 2019 audit. That should be finalized uh, yet this week. It was in draft form at our last month's meeting. So with that, um, it'll be submitted uh, for the board to review and to all appropriate bonding authorities. Thank you, sir. Uh, now we'll move into new business. The first item is the approval of the August 17th, 2020 meeting minutes. Do I hear a motion to approve? President, I make a motion that we approved the minutes with the one typographical error we discussed with uh, with Heather. I have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The motion carries. And next we have the executive director report from Ms. Dunstan. Hi, hey, yes, I'm um, going to give a quick report on some of our projects, but at the end of the meeting, if there are any that I don't hit that you have questions on, feel free to ask. Um, one, if you've noticed on the north side of Otis Avenue and Lee Road, um, the Cityscape apartment project, it's 261 market rate apartments. They'll be called the standard. Um, they're well on their way on budget on time. Um, we have sold 26 out of the 60 single family lots in phase three of the David Weekly Homes project on Wheeler Avenue kind of across from Triton Brewery, if you've noticed those. Those are about a year ahead of schedule as far as sales of those lots. Um, and then we are very close to closing on the hotel project. So that'll be a 98 room Hilton True Hotel on the south side of Otis Avenue, basically mirroring the existing office suites in Giacomo's building, uh, just north of that there. Um, they, they received their approval for their variance from the city of Indianapolis in the last few weeks and have filed for plat approval in October. So the goal is to get that closed and get a shovel in the ground yet this fall for that project. So I'm happy to answer questions about anything else, but those are our major developments lately. Thanks, Ms. Dunson. I'd also like to add that um, we have, for those of you that maybe were here last month, but with interest uh, as it relates to the library, we've had very good conversations with the library folks. Uh, we've received a draft MOU uh, for property on 56th Street that uh, we're working through and hopeful to have uh, something presented for us to uh, consider at our next meeting. Um, so I just wanted to give that update. Um, and now, if we could go to news from the fort from Ms. Dunstan. Sure. Um, we have several people in the audience that might have more information on several of these if you have any questions, but the City of Lawrence is hosting a virtual job fair on September 23rd at five o'clock on Facebook Live, so you can follow their site for that information. Uh, the State Park will be hosting a Vietnam War display on the same day, uh, or I'm sorry, that week, um, from 10 to four at the Museum of 20th Century Welfare but then later that same day, the city's hosting a Loggers for Lawrence Oktoberfest at what we call Civic Plaza. Um, they're on Otis Avenue and Lawrence Village Parkway where the farmer's market is currently held. So that'll be from three to 7 p.m. that afternoon. Um, there are still tickets, I believe, to the October 1st uh, Chamber Membership Luncheon from 1030 to one at the Garrison Conference Center. And then every Thursday, you can stop by for the Lawrence Chamber uh, cruise in for historic cars from 5 to 8 p.m. around Lawton Loop. And every Wednesday, or I'm sorry, that's Wednesday? Not Thursday, sorry, there's a correction. Wednesday, and then Thursdays are the farmer's market from 4 to 7 p.m. until October 1st. So a few more opportunities for that. Um, and then unless any exceptions are made, all meetings will be held in this room at the same time on the third Wednesday of the month, uh, other than January and if there's a, a holiday conflict. And then if you're not already, we encourage you to follow the at Fort Ben IN social media accounts on Facebook and Twitter um, to not only hear about what's going on with this organization, the Fort Harrison Reuse Authority, but um, for other events and updates on other things happening here at the Fort Ben campus with our partners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have our mayor here with us today. Mr. Mayor, would you, uh, do you have any updates or any information you'd like to share? Uh, correct. It, they've agreed to have it substantially complete by the end of 2022. 
might not open until 2023. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, is, uh, do we have any comments from anyone else before we adjourn? Yes, sir, if you could please come to the podium. If you could just state your name for the record, please. Sure, Trace Yates. Mm -hmm. uh, can I ask a couple of questions related to the P and L, to the financials? Sure. I was just curious about uh, sales revenue to date of four four hundred ninety six thousand. I know we might ask Heather to. And yet there was zero. There was zero dollars budgeted for that. Well, because it's hard to budget for not knowing. Those would be the, the phase three David Weekly right. home sales. Mm -hmm. Since they broke around a couple of years ago, I, I, I found a zero budget interesting. I, I didn't know why there was zero budgeted for that. We have a, a, an agreement of how many lots they'll take down at certain milestone dates. Mm -hmm. um, but again, since they're ahead of schedule, it's hard to know when those funds are gonna be received. So we're ahead of those funds, but it's, okay. it's the way that it's shown on the p and I know can be confusing. So, so to that, it's good news. Mm -hmm. Sales revenue is a great number. Right, but, but it was expected revenue, so. Pardon me? It is expected revenue. Expected revenue. Mm -hmm. the closing costs are negative 32,000 for the year, although you've had sales? Again, I think it's the way it's broken down about when, when, when items come in. Um, I'd have to go back and add it again, but just the way it's broken down, I can't put books. Okay. It's not technically a negative number, but And then uh, final question is uh, account number six one six hundred outside fees of one hundred and twenty eight thousand. Outside curious. services. Uh, pardon me. Sorry. Yes, outside services. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious what those were. Well, brown investments is one of them. Is it possible to get a breakdown of those for the public? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other uh, comments from anyone in the audience? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Bruce Hugon. I was just curious, uh, I thought by now we would have seen a call for offers on the PX. What's going on with that? Yes, yeah, so we talked about, or do you wanna go ahead? No, go ahead. We talked about it in our our most recent executive session meeting before this one. Uh, we were very close to issuing a call for offers on that. Um, as you can kind of tell, we had a bit of a shakeup of our board and some new members too on board. And then the J East uh, land property has become a very hot topic as far as um, the library and different things. So that's taken a bit of our time that we had been dedicating to the PX. So it's it's all a factor of just staff time and and getting everyone on the same page. So it's, it's very much still a priority. So you'll see that here shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, are there any comments from board members? Seeing none, uh, make a motion, or I would uh, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>